you. We're going straight live to Sydney now where the Energy Minister, Angus Taylor, now, is outlining the said, details of the government's uh, new energy new policy. Energy, my number one priority is very, very simple. It is to reduce power prices and to do this while well, we keep the lights on. Uh, as you just heard, the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, uh, has given me the formal title of Minister for Energy, but his informal title is Minister for Reducing Electricity Prices. Now, uh, focusing relentlessly on price while keeping the lights on does require some truth-telling. Uh, there will be no ideology in what I do, no grand gestures one way or another, just a simple, pragmatic focus on the solutions. This government's made great strides on energy in recent times, but energy policy was, in the past, uh, bogged down for years in complexity. Complex scheme layered upon a complex scheme. These schemes have not been designed with Australian consumers, whether they be households, small or large business, without consumers. Uh, they haven't been uh, designed with consumers in mind. Other objectives have driven government policy to the point where they've lost sight of what we have to do. The challenge now is to accept that we had a mess and that we're now fixing it, with only one aim above, all any other, above any other, to reduce prices while keeping the lights on. Now, the reason for this focus is to help people, families, small and family businesses to make ends meet and to help industry create the new jobs in line with the jobs that have been created uh, in the last little while. Prices are no longer sustainable for families, for pensioners, for businesses. And when I talk to my constituents and, uh, and small businesses owners in my electorate and around the nation, they tell me they want lower electricity bills. Indeed, not only want, but need. Many are struggling. They know instinctively that prices are too high because they remember a time when electricity prices and electricity more generally in this country was abundant and cheap. They know that something has gone terribly wrong. Research by the Australian Energy Market Commission showed that a third of you, small business people, experienced electricity bill shock in the past year, one third. And I know that many small businesses are at breaking point because of rising electricity prices and the job losses and closures are only a matter of time if we don't get prices down. Well, we hear you uh, and we hear them. We're listening and we're taking practical action right now. I'll be bringing all of my experience, my knowledge and capability to get this job done. Prior to my career in politics, I worked as, as a consultant to Australia's energy, infrastructure and resources sectors and advised global companies on energy policy. For many years, I crunched the numbers and developed energy market models and, and, and analyses for businesses of all sizes. I've been thinking about energy problems and solutions for a very long time. Now, before I outline uh, the direction of, of, of the government, I wish to, to address four points about what motivates me and the government more generally in this area. First, as I've said, we need to recognise that sharp Price, sharp increases in electricity prices, particularly uh, retail prices, uh, particularly the doubling we saw under the previous La Labor government, has eroded the trust of Australians in the capacity of government and politicians to deliver affordable, reliable energy. We need to re-establish that trust. I learned a long time ago in business that you need to get the basics right. For too long, governments have been distracted by the wrong things. And one of the most basic things any business or household can ask for is affordable, reliable energy. But because of a failure to focus on the basics, the electricity sector, like the banks, needs to re-establish its credibility or social licence with the community. That means maintaining and increasing industrial jobs in energy intensive industries and ensuring households, particularly those doing it toughest, can make ends meet. And we can only do that if we put downward pressure on prices. Now, uh, my second point, uh, in, 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 by way of context, is that some in the press in recent days have highlighted my so-called climate change scepticism. I'm not sceptical about climate science, 
But I am and have been for many years deeply sceptical about the economics of so many of the emissions reduction schemes dreamed up by vested interests, technocrats and politicians around the world. For more than 30 years, I've shared concerns about climate change and the impact of CO2 on our climate. I'm a lover of the environment, a farmer, a passionate backcountry skier and hiker. My family, which has farmed in the Monero region of southeastern New South Wales for almost two centuries, has continually changed farming practices, particularly in recent years, to reflect the changing climate. But none of my concerns justify supporting expensive programs that deliver little else other than funnelling consumers' hard-earned money into vested interests, resulting in increased prices and reduced reliability. Whether it was pink bats, cash for clunkers, the CPRS, citizen assemblies or excessive renewable energy targets, the tendency of governments, often aided by willing technocrats, has been to conceive program programs that do little more than raise prices and reduce reliability or increase government spending. In good conscience, I simply can't support the hard-earned wages of Australians and incomes of Australians being siphoned off into these schemes. Thirdly, I see a strong role for commercially viable renewables alongside a continued focus on coal and gas. Renewables have an important role in the energy landscape, as they have had for a long time. For 18 years, from 1949 uh, to 1967, my grandfather, William Hudson, was the first commissioner and chief engineer of the Snowy Mountain Scheme, Australia's greatest renewable scheme, a scheme which has single-handedly done more to reduce emissions than any other project in Australian history. He was extremely proud of the clean energy that Snowy provided and provides. Renewables are in my blood and have been from the day I was born. As well as hydro, solar is playing an increasingly important role in our networks and, in fact, I use, personally use solar technology extensively on, on the farm where I live near Goulburn. Finally, if we're to drive down prices, we need to have laser-like focus. Governments, businesses and individuals are always at their best when they're focused on a clear goal. As small business people, you know better than most the clear Simple, measurable, well-communicated goals work best. As a government, that's been our experience. When Scott Morrison was Immigration Minister in 2013, he worked with the, the then Prime Minister to set one clear goal for his portfolio, stop the boats. There was no ambiguity for him or anyone else working for him. Few believed it was possible, but he did it. Most commentators wanted more nuance, more complexity and more sophistication. But one clear message and one clear goal worked. I wish to give Australians that same clarity. My goal, the goal of my department and the goal of the electricity sector must be simple and unambiguous. Get prices down while keeping the lights on. Now, before I turn to the new direction of the government's energy policy, uh, let me acknowledge important recent achievements, because much of what I'll talk about here today is, is continuous, is contiguous with what has been happening in, in recent months. Retail and wholesale prices have turned a corner. They've turned a corner because of downward pressure on gas prices through our gas market intervention. Electricity prices are turning a corner because we're reducing the costs of transmission and distribution by reforming the limited merits review in line with other sectors in the economy. And prices are turning a corner because we are holding retailers to account, ensuring they offer their customers a better deal with more transparency. But we need more price-busting initiatives. As a Liberal, I'm not a strong believer in heavy-handed government intervention. It would be marvellous if we could fix these problems by leaving industry alone. But unfortunately, we're well past that point. This is a sector now characterised by heavy-handed historical government intervention. Poorly conceived interventions in the past leave us no choice but to make interventions if we're going to get things back on track quickly. On the other hand, the sooner industry itself steps up and provides the solutions to the problems that I'm outlining, the sooner government can get out of the way. 
Now, there are at least three areas of focus for me and for the government if we're going to achieve this very simple, clear goal. It's not an exhaustive list, but it will give you a sense of where we are, where we've been and where we're going. As I said, the direction builds on the outstanding work done by my predecessor in the role, uh, Josh Frydenberg, as well as the re recent uh, ACCC report, Restoring Electricity Affordability in Australia's Competitive Advantage. First, we need to empower consumers, including via a price safety net. One of the most uh, extraordinary and notable developments in so many industries in recent years is the increasing power of customers to hold service providers to account by making more informed, or in order to make, uh, more informed and better choices. New competitors and business models have emerged, shifting power to customers in industries as diverse as taxis, hotels or retail. This delivers better services, better prices and more informed customers. It also holds badly behaved service providers to account for charging too much or providing poor service. This has unfortunately not been the case in the electricity sector. We haven't seen that kind of disruption. We know that many consumers are simply not getting the best available price and retailers are not held to account. If you prepare to switch suppliers each year to get the best market offer, you can find discounts. There's no doubt about that and we've been supporting that process. With encouragement from the government, more people are doing this. But we really want to put, government, uh, put, put customers in charge. The ACCC recommended establishing a default market price to replace unregulated standing offers. And that will mean customers will not have to shop around each year to get a competitive price and to avoid price hikes. The expected savings are significant. Uh, about $183 to just over $400 per annum for households and five, between, somewhere between $560 and $1,500 for small businesses. So significant numbers and of course much of that will depend on the energy intensity of the business and the size of the business itself. In addition, we'll require retailers to use the new default rate as a reference point for all their advertised discounts and we'll eliminate excessive penalties for late payment. Using price comparison websites and giving consumers more power over their usage and payment data, allowing uh, easier switching, will help this process. We'll be establishing a mandatory code of conduct for price comparison websites to focus on consumers, not energy company commissions. Uh, and we're, I am a firm believer in the power of price comparison websites of helping consumers to make, and small businesses, to make better choices. But we need to make sure what they're seeing is not being driven by incentives uh, from uh, profit-hungry profit suppliers. Now, second, we need more competition and more reliable supply in the market, in the electricity market. The ACCC rightly pointed out that each of the individual markets in the national energy market, the NEM, are highly concentrated. A small number of players controlling high market share and far less excess capacity or spare supply than when the national energy electricity market was first formed many years ago. We're also struggling with, as a result of that, with a much tighter balance between supply and demand. As more intermittent generation, unreliable generation has come into the market, most uh, base load or many uh, base load generators have left the market. For example, we saw Hazelwood leaving the market in, in, the, in the recent past. Uh, we've also seen the integration of generators with retailers, something that we saw much less of when the market, the national energy or electricity market was first formed. Now, new supply can come from many different sources. It can be expansion of existing generators, upgrades of, of legacy generators and greenfield projects. Uh, we need to encourage all of these and alongside that we need to encourage the retention of the generating capacity we have in the marketplace already. It's, it's ironic that in a country with an abundance of natural resources, coal, gas, water, solar, we should be in the position we are today. We have to leverage those resources, not leave them in the ground. So we'll be continuing to encourage uh, dropping state and territory coal and gas moratoria, which have contributed significantly 
to this problem and to, to the hike in gas prices as well that we've seen in the recent past. A fair deal for farmer landowners is also a crucial part of the solution to getting faster access to the resources we need to have new supply uh, in the marketplace. Uh, now, last week, the, the, the now Prime Minister and Treasurer announced that we would be implementing a program to underwrite new stable low-cost generation for commercial and industrial customers. We're currently working through the detail of that program and, and that will be done expeditiously. In addition, we've accepted the ACCC's recommendation to cap the share of generation in each market. Cap the share of generation in each market. There's been a, a lot of talk in recent months about increasing investment certainty for the electricity sector. Frankly, I think there's some naivety in the idea that governments can largely eliminate uncertainty for businesses or should even try. Parliaments and governments can't bind future parliaments and governments. They simply can't do it. This is a breach of the fundamental principle of parliamentary sovereignty. But we can create an environment where there's sufficient confidence and incentive to invest. Re-establishing the confidence to invest will be a central goal of any energy market reforms. Thirdly, price gouging needs to stop. Price gouging by distribution and transmission businesses has been a result of over-engineering and over-investment in the networks and being given a regulated rate of return on, the, on their investments. And what a business this is. Convince the regulator that you need to invest and your returns are guaranteed. Most hard-working small business people would weep at the way this works. Uh, small business people never get these sorts of guarantees. All of that is paid for by the electricity consumers in the marketplace and it's unacceptable. The regulatory process needs, needed to change and it's changing with our reforms to the limited merits review. In practice, what this means is it's much harder for distribution and transmission businesses to over-engineer and over-invest with a guaranteed return. At the wholesale generation level, there's enormous potential for strategic pricing in the marketplace or price gouging in the vernacular. In any industry, if market share consolidates, it's easier to hold back capacity from the market and drive up prices. In the very dynamic a very dynamic market like electricity, this is always tempting. When demand is strong and supply is short, holding back capacity can have a massive upward impact on prices, both in the short term through strategic bidding and in the long term by permanently reducing supply in a particular market. So the ACCC proposed a number of changes to address this, which the government accepts, and they include directing the ACCC to hold an ongoing inquiry into prices, profits and margins in, in the NIM right through until 2025 with reports at least six monthly to inform us as to whether those margins are reasonable and whether this kind of behaviour is going on. Establishing greater transparency in the wholesale market with enhanced powers around market manipulation and intervening if businesses don't respond to the ACCC recommendations, including via fines, penalties and, if necessary, divestment. Now, whilst the ACCC didn't recommend divestment, we're prepared to go down that path, albeit as a last resort. The better answer is that the industry works with us to get wholesale electricity prices down. But the loss of trust and the failure to deliver acceptable outcomes has reached the point where the government has no choice but to wield a big stick, which we will use if we have to. Now, in my view, the alternatives to all of this are unacceptable. Our policy in this area is sharply differentiated from Labor, and we make no apology for that. Prices doubled during the tenure of the previous Federal Labor Government, and Jay Retherill's experiment in South Australia with a 50 per cent renewable energy target ended in tears. Not crocodile tears, floods of tears. So what does Federal Labor propose? It wants to take Wetherill's failed experiment national. The difference between us and them could not be more stark. Labor's platform puts climate change at the centre of their broader economic strategy. But as the Prime Minister has said, this government is instead 
focused on delivering for all Australians, and that means reducing electricity prices and cost of living pressures. In contrast, Labor prioritises the 45 per cent Paris emissions reductions target above all else at the expense of lower bills and reliability. They uh, will force the, uh, the closure of coal-fired uh, coal power plants with no plan for energy security, and comparable EIS modelling tells us that this will result in significant price hikes. They've pro proposed uh, damaging bans and moratoria on gas exploration, putting further upward pressure on prices as gas shortages and price hikes feed into electricity prices. Their focus is on batting away Green Party threats to inner city urban MPs, not on developing evidence-based policy that will lower bills. I think these policies, those policies, will leave Australian households and businesses out of pocket and in the dark. Now, while a third of small business feels that the market isn't working in their interest, uh, the Labor Party has publicly stated that high prices are not a market failure, they are proof that the market is doing well. We simply reject that. Now, the, this government understands that small business is the backbone of the economy, as I said. We will continue to back small business to help them get ahead. Practical action on energy prices is just one of the ways we will continue to strive to deliver for you. Our new generation government heralds a new generation of energy policy, energy policy where we sit on the customer's side of the table without other distractions. I'm acutely conscious that the energy industry, more than most, has many stakeholders with many different views and interests and that consultation is crucial to getting alignment and solutions. But the simple truth is that if the industry steps up and does the right thing on price and keeping the lights on, government can step back and focus on other things. We're not at that point yet, and through the initiatives I've outlined and others, we'll be seeking strong alignment across the electricity industry with the interests of customers coming first. My personal focus the Prime Minister's focus and this government's focus will be single-minded, getting those prices down. The time has come for telling the truth and a new relentless focus on the Australian consumer uh, will be the core of that focus. We make no apology for that. Thank you.